I wanted something that felt classic and maybe a, a guitar that never existed. Yeah. So I got a, my first of the v, custom V's and started work on it. Oh, so, yeah, I remember seeing this on stage. Yeah, so this is um, it's a great guitar. What I did was I moved the jack from here uh, inside to it. here. It's much more practical than trying to get a cable. Yeah, than trying out of the to front. get. And, yeah, and like on the the sixty one SG Customs, that vibrola piece is so terrific. So on the guitars that I used to do for Washburn, we had a long piece. Yeah, and I had it cut because I like I like being able to palm when I want. So I had had this cut down, put on, put on this this stop tail piece with two pneumatic, thicker, bigger frets. I don't know what what pickups we ultimately went with because we changed them quite a few times. But um, also contoured the back. Give it the belly cut. Yeah. yeah. So it's terrific because it sits much closer to you. Yeah. And so you get a little bit of a tilt to it. And um, I was always partial to V's with binding on them. Um, in the early days, I had Charlie LeBeau make me uh, a flying V with one short wing. This wing was shorter. And um, he thought I was crazy. But I wanted binding because Albert King had that V. Long Lucy, yeah. Yeah, this is, this is a terrific, terrific guitar. And this was uh, on the end of the road tour. You had a few of these, right? Yes. I saw there was like a Silver Sparkle one and yeah, maybe the, a couple of these black ones. Pretty much all of them, except one. They were all, all this. All yeah. I loved it because it's a V that never was. You know, it's got, it's got the character and the personality uh, of a, a classic old guitar. And it's got a little Star Child it's on it. It's got a little too. Star Child on it. Is this, this rhinestone? Related here? Yes, of course. <laughs> this is why he, the burst didn't yes. come out on the road, right? Yeah, yeah. The, there's no no bursts on tour. This this got chewed up in no time flat. Great. What was it like? To, you know, I remember you know all the old Kiss albums. You know, Kiss plays Gibson guitars because they want and the Pearl best. drums because yeah. they want the best. What was yeah. it like to, you know, you got Tommy back on stage and Gene did his deal and to finally have some some Gibsons back on stage too. It's at the end of it when it all started that way yeah, too. Well, things, you know, I, I think in life things hopefully come full circle. Yeah, Gibson has always been a part of my life, and Gibson is pretty much for me the standard that I was hoping to reach, be able to have Gibson guitars. So it only seemed appropriate to me um, beyond having a, a flying V on this last tour. Having a Gibson, this guitar is, uh, again, everything I would want it to be. And uh, it sounds fantastic. And matter of fact, I gave JR one of these that I, that I played on tour. Um, Fair enough. As a, yeah. More as appreciation, just because yeah. I, I was so humbled. And he said to me, it's a monster. I mean, in the studio, it just sounds... It sounds fantastic. It's a it's a guitar that you should be making. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll we'll see what happens here. Now, these yeah, a long history with yes. these, and I remember the black one with kind of the mirrored yes pick guard. I think it just had the one single pickup single pickup in it. Yeah, I mean, I know you said you like asymmetrical guitars. That's a pretty symmetrical yes. guitar. But in terms of classic guitar designs, I mean, for me, that's one it's, of the coolest of all time. It's as good as it gets it's just funny because when i see some of the players who use them i remember seeing um seeing the kinks yeah <laughs> and with the with the peg here and you yeah you know um so yeah i i have one here and one here so because i i like a guitar to stay close to me yeah. so it doesn't start swinging yeah dave, dave davies had a, a great one kenny hensley had a great one in uriah heap yeah just the with the wrap instead of a two pneumatic and a stop tail. I mean, was that just to to leave enough room to add yes. a little bit of extra flair on there? Yeah. But you still got intonation and totally. two pneumatic and yeah. all that stuff. I'm a big believer in you want you want as much downward pressure as possible to resonate in the guitar. So this is a nice way of doing it. Yeah.
Saw that one on stage not that long ago. Yep. Anybody who's a fan of Flying V's, you gotta have one of these too. You gotta. You kinda it's, can tell by the case what's in here. Um, I was a stickler um, with my original V, of course you had the case. And nowadays, if you don't have your original case, it really, really is more suspect, especially with the amount. Well, especially with Karina guitars, because yes. there's so few, yeah. yeah Wrong so, case is kind of a not a good start. So, you know, I thought this was vibey. So my friend uh, in, in Canada, Gord Miller, who has a GM vintage, he was making cases. So I was like, well, yeah. I taught him how to relic cases. And uh, I guess in return, he, he made me this case. He hand sewed it. And, wow. Uh, That's, you know, it's, it's great. It's cool. And we all know what's inside of it. So this, this is a, a 2006. Quite honestly, I wasn't crazy about the guitar. And uh, I didn't find it very playable or friendly when I had it. There were some things about this guitar that I love, the aesthetics, clearly. I mean, it's such a classic uh, instrument. For a recreation, it still wasn't perfect. I know that what you guys are doing now is, is about as good as it gets, but in 2006, it left something to be desired. So um, I called Kim and we went through it, wound up with this, which is arguably my best sounding guitar. It's, really? It's, it's a fantastic sounding guitar and uh, he did a great job on it. The neck wasn't right. The neck was a, a bit clunky. Now it's terrific. So this is, a, this is the 59 reissue, which pretty similar to a 58, I suppose, but great weight. Yeah. Great yeah. Weight. When you had the original, how, how often would that 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 come was out? Uh, That was in the studio. Whenever I was in the studio, that was in the studio. So again, it was played on Destroyer. It was one of my go-tos for the studio because I, again, I couldn't take it on tour. It would have looked like one or yeah. the other. What is, what do you find the Karina does? Cause obviously different than a maple, a maple topped mahogany guitar and, and different than an SG and all that kind of stuff. Did you notice a tonal thing with these guitars? I find them, you know, again, throaty is what comes, comes to mind. Um, I don't find it that different than a mahogany body. I mean, Karina is in, it's a, in the it's, same it's, family, yeah. similar family, yeah. But as far as the aesthetic of it and the design, I think, you know, aesthetics affect how you play. Perhaps it brings something out in, in, in the player. I think all guitars do that. You know, you, you don't play the same on one as you, as you do on the other. And this is uh, during rehearsals for the tour, whenever I would have this guitar, all the guys would say, that's your best sounding guitar. Yeah. It's just, I mean, perfection of design, just stunning everything about it. I and this it. rubber piece. The, yeah, the yeah. rubber pad. Yeah. It's, uh, and the Ray's logo. Oh. I, there's just so much stuff that I could go on for days. You know, that's basically like the automobile mentality into a guitar. So this is very much something that you would see on a car. Cadillac yeah. or whatever, yeah. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's, this is a terrific instrument, and it, it really is, you know, I'm not trying to convince myself or anyone else, but it's really, again, an example of you don't have to have something that's super old to have something that's great. Yeah. To me, this pleases my aesthetic of wanting, you know, something vintage-looking without having to find it prohibitive. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic.